I appeal to you, kind reader, or listener, Fritz, Theodore, Ernest, or whatsoever your name may be, and I beg you to bring vividly before your mind's eye your last Christmas table, all glorious with its various delightful Christmas presents, and then perhaps you will be able to form some idea of the manner in which the two children stood speechless, with their eyes fixed on all the beautiful things. How after a while, Marie, with a sigh, cried, Oh, how lovely, how lovely. And Fritz gave several jumps of delight. The children had certainly been very, very good and well behaved all the foregoing year to the be thus rewarded, for never before had so many beautiful and delightful things been provided for them. The great Christmas tree on the table bore many apples of silver and gold, and all its branches were heavy with bud and blossom. Oh, goodness, consisting of sugar, almonds, many tinted bonbons, and all sorts of things to eat. Perhaps the prettiest thing about this wonder tree, however, was that in all the recesses of its spreading branches, hundreds of little tapers glittered like stars, inviting the children to pluck its flowers and fruit. Also, all around the tree, on every side, every Everything shone and glittered in the loveliest manner. Oh, how many beautiful things there were! Who or who could describe them all? Oh, describe them all. Marie gazed there at the most delicious dolls and all kinds of toys and, what was the prettiest thing of all, a little silk dress with many tinted ribbons was hung upon a projecting branch so that she could admire it on all sides, which she accordingly did, crying out several times, Oh, oh, what a lovely, lovely, darling little dress, and I suppose, I do believe, I, I shall really be allowed to put it on. Fritz, in the meantime, had had two or three trials of how his new fogs, which he had found tied to the table, could gallop, and now stated that he seemed a wildish sort of brute. But no matter, he felt sure he would soon get him well in order, and he set to work to muster his new squadron of hussars, admirably equipped in red and gold uniforms with real silver swords and mounted on such shiny white horses that you would have thought they were pure silver too. When the children had sobered down a little and were beginning upon the beautiful picture books, which were open so that you could see all sorts of most beautiful flowers and people of every hue, to say nothing of lovely children playing all as naturally represented as if they were really alive and could speak. There came another tinkling of a bell to announce the display of Godpapa Drosselmeyer's Christmas present, which was on another table against the wall concealed by a curtain. When this curtain was drawn, what did the children behold on a green lawn bright with flowers stood a lordly castle with a great many shining windows and golden towers a chime of bells was going on inside it doors and windows opened and you saw very small but beautiful ladies and gentlemen with plumed hats and long robes down to their heels walking up and down in the rooms of it in the central hall which seemed all in a blaze there were quantities of little candles burning in silver chandeliers. Children in little short doublets were dancing to the chimes of the bells. A gentleman in an emerald green mantle came to a window, made signs, and then disappeared inside again. Also, even Godpapa Drosselmeyer himself 
but scarcely taller than Papa's thumb, came now and then and stood at the castle door, then went in again. Fritz had been looking on with the rest of the beautiful castle and the people walking about it and dancing in it with the thumb leant on the table. Then he said, God, Papa Drosselmeyer, let me go into your castle for a little while. Drosselmeyer answered this could not possibly be done, in which he was right, for it was silly of Fritz to want to go into a castle which was not as so tall as himself, golden towers and all, and Fritz saw that this was so. After a short time, as the ladies and gentlemen kept on walking about in the same fashion, the children dancing, and the emerald man looking out of the same window, and Godpapa Drosselmeyer coming to the door, Fritz cried impatiently, Godpapa Drosselmeyer, please come out of that other door. <laughs> that, that can't be done, dear Fritz, answered Drosselmeyer. Well, resumed Fritz, make that green man that looks out so often walk about with the others. <laughs> that can't be done either, said his godpapa once more. Make the children come down then, said Fritz. I want to see them nearer. Nonsense, nonsense. Nothing of that sort can be done cried Drosselmeyer with impatience. The machinery must work out as it's doing now. It can't be altered, you know. It can't be altered. Oh, said Fritz, can't be done, eh? Very well then, Grandpapa Drosselmeyer. I'll tell you what it is. If your little creatures in the castle there can only always do the same thing, they're not worth much and I think precious little of them. No, give me my hussars. Oh, they've got to manoeuvre backwards and forwards just as I want them, and not all fastened up in a house. With which he made off to the other table and set his squadron of silver horse-trotting horse here and there, wheeling and charging and slashing right and left, to his heart's delight. Oh, Marie had slipped away softly too, for she was tired of the promenading and dancing of the puppets in the castle. Though kind and gentle as she was, she did not like to show it as her brother did. Drosselmeyer, somewhat annoyed, said to the parents, After all, Oh, an ingenious piece of mechanism like this is not a matter for children who don't understand it. I shall put my castle back in its box again. Oh, but Mother came to the rescue and made him show her the clever machinery which moved the figures. A oh, Drosselmeyer taking it all to pieces, putting it together again, and quite recovering his temper in the process so that he gave the children all sorts of delightful men and women with golden faces, hands and legs, which were made of ginger cake, and with which they were greatly content. <laughs>